हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम यू ऑल माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर दीपक एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द यूरेटर सो द यूरेटर्स आर द नेरो थिक वॉल्ड मस्क्यूलर ट्यूब्स विच कन्वे यूरिन फ्रॉम द किडनी टू द यूरिनरी ब्लैडर्स ओके सो दे आर एक्चुअली द मस्क्यूलर ट्यूब्स विच कन्वे यूरिन फ्रॉम द किडनी टू द यूरिनरी ब्लैडर the lies on the posterior abdominal wall actually the lies on posterior side of the peritoneum and in the abdominal part of the ureter they are lies on the posterior abdominal wall and in its pelvic part they lies on the lateral pelvic wall okay so the dimensions of the ureter so it is about 25 cm long means the 10 inch long so it has a two parts its upper half it is lies in the abdominal cavity whereas its lower half it is lies in the pelvic cavity as we have discussed its abdominal part is lies on the posterior abdominal wall and its uh, uh, pelvic part it is lies on the lateral pelvic wall then it is about 3 mm in the diameter its diameter it is about the 3 mm the course of the ureter so the ureters are start from the urinary pelvis okay so in the kidney there is a urinary sinus uh, sorry the renal sinus and in the renal sinus there are the major calyx which uh, converge with each other 2 to 3 major calyx and they are forming the renal pelvis okay this renal pelvis then is run medially and the downward and at the lower pole of the kidney they are continue as a ureter then its name is change and it is called as a ureter proper this ureter it is runs downward and medially okay downwards and medially on anterior side of the transverse processes of the uh, of the vertebras and on the sous major muscle then they are crossing the common iliac vessels from the anterior side okay they are crossing the common iliac vessels from the anterior side and enter into the pelvic cavity okay inside the pelvis when they are reach to the pelvis they are runs on the lateral pelvic wall and they are crossing the pelvic brim okay after crossing the pelvic brim in the lesser pelvis they are runs downward but backward and laterally okay means this direction okay so they are runs downwards but not forward they are backwards and laterally so they are runs on this uh, direction downward backward and laterally okay and at the anterior margin of the greater sciatic notch okay they are runs along the anterior margin of the greater sciatic notch and from that they are reach up to the uh, the ischial tuberosity okay when they are reach at the ischial tuberosity then they are turn their direction and then they are uh, <coughs> they turns at a medial side okay they are medial and forward side so they are runs uh, from medial and forward side and reach up to the poles of the urinary bladder and enter into the urinary bladder so this is the course of the ureters okay now the ureters they are they have not the uniform uh, diameter they are constricted on the five different areas so these are the normal constrictions of the ureter okay so uh, they are at the pelvic ureteric junction first constriction it is at the when the renal pelvis it is continue as a ureter so at, at the pelvic ureteric junction there is a first uh, a constriction is here then the second constriction when they are crossing the pelvic brim okay when they are crossing the pelvic brim there is a second constriction then the crossing of the ureter by the ductus deferens in the males when the ductus deferens is crossing the ureter okay from the anterior side so there is a one constriction here and in the female when the round ligament of the ureter uh, uh, uterus it is crossing the duct, uh, the ureters uh, the constriction is present okay 
then when they are entering into the uh, bladder wall okay so entering and coursing at the bladder wall at this area also there is a fourth normal constriction and final when they are opening of ureter orifice at the trigone when they are open at the trigone there is a fifth constriction okay so these are the uh, normal five constrictions of the ureter first of all at the pelvic ureteric junction second is at the crossing at the pelvic brim then third one is the crossing of the ureter by the ductus deferens fourth one when uh, they are entering into the uh, bladder wall and the fifth one final one it is when they are open at the trigone so this in this five area there is a five constrictions in the ureter okay then the intravesicular part of the uh, ureters so the ureters are open uh, from both the angles of the urinary bladder and there runs inside the urinary bladder and opens at the trigone trigone it is one area in the urinary bladder we will discuss it in the urinary bladder okay so they are opens at here in the trigone so both the ureters are open here okay so when the uh, bladder it is also a muscular organ okay so when the bladder is distended okay so when the bladder is distended then the space in between these two ureter it is about the 5 centimeter okay but when the urinary bladder is shrink when there is no urine in the urinary bladder then this space it is about only 2.5 centimeter okay then the course of the urine, uh, ureter in the urinary bladder it is act as a valve okay and it prevents the regurgitation of the urine inside the uh, inside the ureters okay so it is act like a valve the valvular, valvular action is present here in the intravesicular part of the ureters okay so then the artery supply of the ureters which arteries are supplying so there are actually so many arteries it is uh, it can be divided in the three parts the upper part of the ureter then the middle part of the ureter and the pelvic part of the ureter okay so in its upper part it is supplied by the three different arteries okay so the branch from the renal artery first of all here the branch from the renal artery okay it is supplying its upper uh, upper part then the branch from the gonadal arteries okay it is also supplying is upper part and the aortic branch okay it is also supplying is upper part okay then in its abdominal area so abdominal part also there is a branch of the gonadal artery gonadal arteries branch it is supplying then the aortic branch it is supplying and branch from the common iliac artery they are also supplying uh, in in the abdominal part of the ureters then in the pelvic part there are so many branches here the branch from the internal iliac artery okay direct branch from the internal iliac artery then the branch from the superior vesicular artery okay this one the branch from the superior vesicular artery is also supplying then the branch from the uterine artery okay uterine arteries branch it is also supplying then branch from the middle rectal artery then the branch from the vaginal artery then branch from the inferior vesicular artery this all arterial branch are supplying to the pelvic part of the ureters okay so this is about is artery supply then the nerve supply so which nerves are mostly the sympathetic sympathetic fibers are comes from the t10 to l1 segments okay and the parasympathetic fibers are comes from s2 to s4 segments okay and these all fibers are supply uh, innervate the ureter from the three different plexuses the renal plexus then the aortic plexus and the hypogastric plexus okay so through these three plexuses the fibers from the 
T10 to L1 and H2 to S4 are in uh, innervate the ureters okay in its different parts so this is about is uh, uh, now in nervous innervation okay now the clinical anatomy clinical anatomy of the ureter so first of all there is a ureteric colic okay it is a very severe condition the severe pain it is occurs in this uh, colic okay this colic type of the pain and it is due to the uh, presence of the stone inside the ureter okay so the ureteric stones are cause the ureteric colic and this pain it is refers from the loin area to the groin area okay because this area this all area the dermatomes which are supplying uh, the uh, the cutaneous nerves which are supplying to these dermatomes they are also supplying to the uh, ureters okay so that's why this pain it is uh, um, uh, comes from the uh, loin area and it is traverse uh, lower at the groin area so there is also pain inside the scrotum in the females there is a pain in the uh, labiums and uh, there there is also pain in the medial side of the thigh so this is a unbearable pain due to the stone which is present into the ureteric area okay so it is called the ureteric colic ureteric stones so mostly this ureteric stone may be fixed in uh, one of the constrictions because it is a constricted part so it is a more chances uh, um, um, for that so mostly the stones uh, are constrict here at the pelvic ureteric junction then when the entering uh, in the bladder area and then uh, where the opening of the uh, ureter at the trigone so in this three main area in this three main constriction mostly the ureteric stones are fixed and they are causing the uh, ureteric colic okay then some anomalies are there they are the duplex ureters means sometimes the ureteric bud is divided and two ureters are present okay so from the renal pelvis there is not a single uh, ureter but the two ureters are present and finally these two ureters are fixed anywhere okay they are merged with each, each other and forming a final ureter so it is like that so this duplex ureter may be present due to the anomalies then the ectopic ureters means ureters generally uh, opens at the lateral angles of this urinary, urinary, uh, urinary bladder but sometimes they may open here on its lower part or here on its anterior parts so this type of the opening they, they may be considered as a ectopic ureters then ureterocils so what is the ureterocils so ureters we have discussed that they, they are the narrow tubules okay but sometimes they may dilate like that okay so this type of the dilatations are known as a ureter seals okay so this is all about the clinical anatomy of the ureter so here the ureter is completed hope so you may understand thank you thank you very much